Welcome to the one, the only, Splatterlot! The game show that invites 12 brave young warriors to enter the Splatterlot kingdom and go head to head with the dastardly devious defenders as they compete to capture the highly coveted crown of Splatterlot. Will the defenders be able to keep the castle safe or will the attackers overthrow them and in the end reign victorious? Who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teeter? And above all, who will go? Splat! Hello, in case you're wondering, one of us is Dick. And the other one is Dom. Which makes it easy to remember which one of us is which. Here's something else that's easy to remember. <laughs> splat a lot. Uh, if you like splat a lot, then you'll like splat a lot. But it's so much more. It's a time-honoured action adventure where good battles with evil until a new champion is found to unite the kingdom. I prefer my line. All right. Round one is the moat challenge, where only the six fastest will survive. Round two is escape the stockade, but only four will succeed. And round three is capture the crown, where only one will win. That royal headgear is up for grabs. So that's three top challenges all in one show? Yes, it's a three-for-one splatterway. Right, enough of the sales pitch. Here's round one in more detail. We begin with the pungent plank. Then it's the rolling mace. The impossible incline. The beastly battle axes. Slow down a bit. Then it's over the rope bridge of disaster. And finally, the debilitating disc. I'm exhausted just describing it. Well, pace yourself, otherwise you won't last the show. In fact, you may want to look away now, as round one is just about to get worse. What? Ah! Otherwise known as Tinkor. Ah! Otherwise known as Crop Mess. And ah! otherwise known as Shaden. Prepare for battle. Prepare. Oh, stinky tinky. Yes, these are our three defenders in round one. Crocknet is on the water cannon. Tinkor has the vaporizer. And Shaden will be on shower and splat zuka duty. Here's Hayley. <laughs> well, at the moment, Shaden rules. You picked the wrong day to mess with a ninja. Oh, and just look how quickly she makes it to the splat zuka. She loads, fires, and misses. Well, an almost perfect start from the blue ninja. Snout! And an almost perfect start from Hayley. Almost perfect, as in not perfect at all. But she's made it to the incline. Hello, attacker. Allow me to apologise. I have a bit of a gas problem. Oh, disgusting. Really boogie, though. And... <laughs> Bombalate! Hayley forgets to stop running at the end of the incline. This is what she should have done. See? But she didn't. Shaden takes a long-range splat. And Tinkor is still vaporising, but Haley seems to be coping well on the battle axes. Well, that's normally where it all goes wrong. Turkey plucker! Yep, told you. Well, she puts her best foot forward, but leaves the other one trailing. She's almost doing the splits, but ends up doing the turkey plucker. That's good. Now, your biggest challenge, facing Crocknest. Frosty welcome from Croc, as Haley takes a plunge and pump her! And down she goes. Haley at the debilitating disc. Nelly Pot! Let's see that again. Nelly Pot! Nelly Pot! But despite that Nelly Pot, she's fine and makes it through in 624. Good victory dance. Here's Michael. The prince is ready to become king! So, here is Prince Michael on the slope. Hello, Michael. I hear you think you're worthy of being our king. What makes you think you're worthy? Well, Shaden, I'm sure he'd love to stop and chat, but he's got a mace to cross. Oh, fuddle sucker! Maybe he doesn't want that crown after all. No, he wants it this much. Or maybe even this much. All right, all right. You've made your point. Here's our prince on the incline. Michael. Bit below the belt there from Tinkor, but it doesn't put Michael off. He's down the incline. Nicely done. Now onto the battle axes. And he's held on! Of course, if you make a clean crossing, you avoid being splatted. But you also save a lot of precious time. Just the debilitating disc to go windy. Tinkor enjoyed that, but so did Michael. And he'll be happy with that time too. Not king yet, but who knows? Already slipping and sliding. It's Anish. Anish, how do you spell that battle cry? Here he is on the incline. Anish, smile. Just realised smile is an anagram of slime. Yeah, and that's splat, however you spell it. I like it when we say clever stuff. Mm, yes, it's uh, quite rare, though, isn't it? And now, Anish is back up, but he looks exhausted. Had enough? Not yet! Oh, still not had enough? Well, Anish bravely dug deep and finished. By that time of 9.01, could be a problem later. Up next, and down next, is Danielle.
Mm, I find blue pizza is generally past its sell-by date. There she is at the battle axes. All right, Daniel. Let's see if you got what it takes. Well, she's taking time, that's for sure. Uh, Full Kirk! With the first back splash of the day, that was Shaden. But Danielle is literally unmoved. This one seems to be taking her time, Shaden. Well done, Cogness. Sharp as ever. And Danielle's on the move. That's the first axe. Brat versus Tash! Why did she jump off? Maybe she saw something. A bear? A shark? A snake? You? <laughs> yes, that would do it. Dom Zed on the axe. Shut up! Well, at least you scared her into finishing. Yes, but that time of 10.23 might not be fast enough. Here's Kiana kicking off with a base splat. Goober Walla! Maybe Kiana, but will you rule splat a lot? That's the question. Here's another question. Will Kiana make it over the axes? Well, she's also taking her time, so we'll speed things up a little. OK, we'll speed things up a lot. Come on, Kiana. Nearly there. Jungle Blaster! OK, back to real time. And her real time of 6.15 might just be good enough. Woohoo! Pacing over the mace now is Twinkle Toes, Hannah! I take style! OK, but can she tame the defenders? My no, King Gun! Ninjas don't get angry, but I'm angry! Bummy! Ah! Sorry, did you say you wanted more? OK! Double Bummy! Hannah takes a splat on the booty from Shaden and almost a bucket for the slime from Tinkor. But she's made it over the axes! I'm gonna finish what you guys couldn't. I don't know how Tinkor and Shaden will take that, but she's made her points. There goes Hannah into the moti! And Croc turns the cannon off. Very green. Here's Hannah at the debilitating disc. I'm waiting for you. This doesn't look good. Sneak Witch! And horse loving Hannah is in a one horse race for that bale of hay. <laughs> Even so, she gallops round her kingdom in a very respectable time of 4.15. A great way to win the first half! So Prince Michael leads the way with four minutes one, but Danielle, who was scared by Dom earlier, has the time to beat of 10.23. How could this scare anyone? You stop it. Some of our viewers might have just eaten. Well, let's hope the six remaining attackers haven't. It's still pretty sporty out there! So, we're halfway through round one. Which means six attackers have already been round the course. <laughs> and six more are about to. But only the six fastest will move on to the next challenge. <laughs> Which makes it very finely balanced indeed. Yes, at this particular moment in time, it would be impossible to predict who's going through. <laughs> but we do have the times from the first half attackers. <laughs> right now! <laughs> I win. Here are those times. Michael leads with four minutes one, but both Anish and Danielle are in danger and are hoping for some slow times in the second half. So, with a watery crockness, a gassy tinkor, and a slippy shaden. <laughs> Let's bring on our next attacker, Sarah. Beaver Tail! So, Beaver Tail Sarah screams the second half into life. Shaden, let's see that ninja accuracy. Shanklin! Good shot, Shaden! Let's see that again. Yes, it's a triple Shanklin attack from our blue ninja. Tinkor asked for accuracy, and that's what he got. Or rather, that's what Sarah got. Here she is at the maze, more twinkle toes, but fluffle nuts! Loving that twinkle toed noise from Sarah. But what's that other sound? It's the sound of her beaver tail hitting the maze spikes. What a sensible answer. Snap her up, Cockney. Hello there. <laughs> Flubbery snitch! You know, the defenders are really backing each other up in the second half and getting results like this. But Sarah has made it with a good time of 4.57, knocking out Danielle in the process. Ah! I like Calvin already. And here he is on the slippery catwalk. Give us a pose, darling. Calvin declines, but we've got him anyway and turned him into Splatterlot's most wanted. Shaden has him in her sights. Saltash! A back splat to start with. And Calvin, a.k.a. Scoodles, runs for the hills but forgets he's on a rolling mace and down he goes! Well, partner, like a cattle rustling critter, he gets lassoed into the watering hole. Thank you, Dominic Clint Eastwood. So you think you're worthy of our crown, do you, Calvin? Oh, what do you need an answer? Fine, I'll just splat you then. Shaden misses, but then so does Calvin and he's back in the wobble flog. He dies, avoiding four paintballs, but is once again a prisoner in the Wapple Flock. OK, Scoodles, you're no longer on the run, and with 6.10, you're currently through. About to take a plunge onto the pungent planks, please welcome Corinne. Blue cheese! Not to everyone's taste. What, Corinne? No, blue cheese. She's really struggling on that slippery slope. Come on, Corinne! 
She refuses to give up, but oh dear. Come on, Corinne. Look, even Stinky Tinkle's lost interest, and he loves blue cheese. It's turning into hard cheese for Corinne. She just can't make it. Nobbly Wally. No, no, no. No, no, no. Indeed, Tinkle. Corinne's time is simply too slow to qualify. Hard cheese, Corinne. You've already said that. Sophia should be okay on the twisty, slippery slope then. I see you. <laughs> I see you too, Mister. Oh, it's Tinkor, not Mister. Mister Tinkor is, of course, Tinkor's dad, Mister Terry Tinkor, who looks uncannily like Tink with a tash. Nice twist there. Back to our own twister on the maze. Well, twists, turns, and welly wanger. Sophia, so slow. There are times when it's worth listening to what Tinkor has to say. That wasn't one of them. Here's Sophia down the incline. Chugglehofer. Well, she breezed down the slope. Then got the wind knocked out of her sails. Time for a weather forecast. Guess weather. Sophie is through. Well, she looks happy. I'd say she's... Oh. Well, the mood changed like the weather. Sorry, Sophia. See you in the next round. Knock. <laughs> Here's Stephen. Hurry on! Some party. Welcome to the battle axis. Watch your step. Oh, oh. Pudding botherer! Well, as parties go, it had some high points and then some very low points. Mm, I'd suggest a change of venue next time. Ooh, all good, man! Don't worry, I'll fix it. I think Croc's about to dampen the party atmosphere. Yep, there she goes. Well, what's this? Yeah. Stephen crosses in one easy move and doesn't even get wet. Shake your fist all you like, Tink, but that was the best move of the day. And Stephen is through with a time of 4.32. Face the run, Fluffy! The freak of nature! And here is Fluffy on the slippery slope. Brandon! Freak of nature! Hmm, that's rich coming from Tinkle. Brandon makes his move and that move leads to a Buffy! Well, we've seen this before. Break here and you're home and dry. Break there and you're home and wet. Well, Fluffy, a bit bedraggled. He's back up. Down the incline. Here he goes. And... Trout blanket! It's the same problem as before. Apply the brakes here and not there. Oh, I'm all right. oh I better try harder then. Brandon, splash! <laughs> and Brandon gives Tinkle the thumbs up, but will the battle axes give him the thumbs down? I don't think he can hold on. No, quinge bowl! And that's a splat. <laughs> yes, it's been a tough round for Fluffy, but look at him go at the finish line. Six minutes two, we'll see him through to the next round. Rock and roll! Brandon, you can stop now. So, that's the end of the moat challenge. Bye-bye. Yes. We now have our six fastest attackers who will be moving on to round two. They are Michael, Hannah, Stephen, Sarah, Fluffy, I mean, uh, Brandon, and Calvin. They've done well, but it doesn't get any easier. They now have to escape the stockade, which is as tricky as it sounds. Yes, new defenders, new foam, and new slime. But, of course, it's the same old Splatfest. Ladies and gentlemen, before we commence with round two, as they shall never be heard again, please put your hands together for the battle cries from round one. Pink and chocolate roll! I love blue pizza! The prince is ready to be king! Beaver tails and blue cheese! Party on! You better watch out! The twister's coming through! Uh... Face the wrath of Fluffy, the freak of nature! <coughs> and those were the battle cries from the first round. <laughs> and here are the six fastest attackers from the first round. Are we Not again. Okay, yep. Michael, Hannah, Stephen, Screaming Sarah, Fluffy Brandon, and Calvin. Now then, old boy. Oh, me? Yeah. Yes. If I needed an exciting shopper list for round two, what would be on it? Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> Stockade, hexapods, rungs, ladders, flags. Ladders. You said that. Stockade. You said that. Oh, and two sticky buns and a bug roll. OK, let's just do that again. Attackers must stand on the small hexapods to grab ladder rungs to build their ladders. The boss is four to do so can then grab a flag from the middle and make their escape. Oh, and three new defenders. First up is the barbarian we like to call... Scar! Then the ballistic... Police! And finally, the high and mighty... Nitrous! You want the crown! Uh, you don't stand a chance against us! Against us! So, the attackers are in the stockade. Let's match names to vests. Brandon in purple and green stripes. Sarah in pink. 
Anna in blue, Michael in green, Stephen wearing a lovely orange, and Calvin in a green and orange combo. The defenders are poised. Ah. Hey, they're off. Michael on the receiving end of Scab's froth brother. And Sarah with a perfect landing. These two have their first runs. They are setting an early pace. Campbellise to slow them down. No! No! She misses. Sarah now at the ladder, but Hannah also has a run. Steve's struggling to choose. Maybe Scab can help. Splat! Well, Scab's a generous guy. He froths Steve, but then splats Brandon so he doesn't feel left out. He's getting slippy out there, but Sarah's got a second run. Steve also starting to make progress. Take a turn, Nitrous! Nitrous is on fire today! The defenders have started well and they're all getting along. Never a good sign. You don't even have any ladders. Give them a chance, Belisa. They've only just started. Oh, squirt! Our oh, first big splat in the stockade. Squirt! 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 It's rush hour in the middle. Steve slips and Hannah trips. I got a little present for you. It's called Slime. How thoughtful, Belisa. Zabros! Ah! I'm annoying! I'm annoying! I don't like it when people call me names. And name calling Calvin is froth. Hello! At least they're being ignored by Michael, who is on the last rung. Maybe this will get his attention. Three looks good on you, little man. You just can't win with the defenders. Call them names and they splat you. Ignore them and they still splat you. Even so, Michael completes his ladder and grabs the first flag. The other attackers need to pick up the pace if they want to catch up. Michael makes it to the top. He's through and becomes our first finalist. I heard blue is your favorite color. And I heard you make a lot of things up, Belista. Hannah, now, frothed by Scab. Jump! Jump already! He's loving it. Sarah helps herself to a second flag. And Steve has his last ring in place. Remember, two attackers won't make it through this round. Steve now has the third flag. Only one left. Hurry up, Brandon. Sarah's at the top and makes it through. And Steve's about to join her. Not before Belista has one last splat. Pinpoint accuracy from Belista, and again! It might not change the result, but it's never too late for a proper good splatting. But Steve won't mind because he's in the final, which means one flag remains. Could it be Calvin's? Or Brandon's? Careful! Or maybe Hannah's? Nitrous might have a say in the matter. Well, she chooses to slime Hannah. Will that help the boys? Brandon's after his final run. Come on! I'm not just going to give you the crown. And Scab has focused his attention on Calvin. Can Brandon take advantage? No, he's down in the foam. Which allows Hannah to sneak in and take the last flag. She watches her footing and heads to the ladder. I don't know if it's in your best interest to come up here. Well, it is if she wants to reach the final. Calvin and Brandon are still battling on the barrels. But it's too late because Hannah has reached the top and is through. Oh, that's all good, Michael. Yes, that's a new low for a high five. But no matter, as they are today's Blacklock finalists. Ooh, Michael once again in the thick of it. Brandon and Calvin wish they were in the thick of it, but they're just left in the foam. So, heading for the final round, we have Michael, Sarah, Stephen and Hannah all seeking to capture the crowd. Only three things stand in their way. The course itself. All six defenders. And, of course, each other. So who will win? It's impossible to say. All we do know is someone will be leaving the rest in a spin. Nice. Right, me lucky ducklings. Time for some splat stats. Put in your hat what you got. Well, Hannah was second in the moat challenge and Sarah came second in the stockade, but it's really all about Michael. He's won both rounds. And what was his battle cry again? The prince is ready to be king. Yes, Prince Michael's prediction might come to pass. Is it truly written in the pages of destiny that he will rule splat a lot? Yeah, all right, all right. You know, there are four finalists, remember? Competing with Michael are Lady Sarah, Sir Stephen and Princess Hannah. What? I promoted them. It seemed like the fair thing to do. What's fair got to do with it? I mean, if we were being fair, then we wouldn't put the attackers up against all six defenders, would we? Fair point. Mm. And here they are. Belista, Tinkor, Scab, Crocknest, Nitrous and Shaden. Let's check out the course in more detail. Our four brave young warriors start with a cleansing mud bath. Then it's over the slippy slides towards the teeter-totters. The barrier of all barriers leads to the leafy lily pads. Which are at the foot of our wonderful water wall and the much-treasured crown of Splatterlot. Let's just say it's a bit harder than your maths homework. The attackers are already lined up. Stephen's in the orange vest, Michael's in green, Hannah's in blue, and Sarah's in pink. Hope you can swim! Hope you can swim! The defender's menacing as ever. Hope you can swim! My little tinker has the greatest smile. Truly menacing. And down they go into the mud bath. Mucky stuff. They're greeted by Scab and Belisa on the foam cannons. And Sarah is the first to slip on the slippy slides. But the rest soon catch up and slip up. And our sweet prince is the first onto the teeter-totters. 
Falkirk! And Scab gives Michael a right royal splatting. He's down. And that's on balance, Stephen. Scumboid! Those feet belong to Sarah and she belongs in the masala. Hey, remember Sarah's battle cry? Demon Tails! Demon Tails! Those mucky feet belong to Hannah. I can't do it! Did you win? Yes, Hannah! Great, that's all they need to hear. And that news has sent Michael into a tailspin. Cabbage bags! What a move from the young prince. In slow motion, it really was quite majestic. Yes, everyone's going to be trying that after the show. Right, back to the action, and they're all still teetering. Oh, Ooh, Tinkle's right adding there. time to Scab's Black Zooka. Hey, you're a lady. Yeah. Scab fires. Peterborough. Ah. Yes, Stephen, distracted by Lady Shaden, gets a back splat from Scab. The oldest trick in the book. I love my job. That's good. Ah. I mean, can you imagine Scab working in a bank or teaching? There's Hannah. No, she still can't do it. But can Stephen? This time he ignores Lady Shaden. Oh, no, you do not. Remember, Stephen needs to get both feet on the barrier, otherwise it's back to the teeter. Back to the teeter, then. <laughs> Sarah, teetering. Sarah, splatting. Come on! Now can Red Hot favourite Michael stay on the barrier? Go! Well, the defenders look flustered, and Michael does indeed make it onto the barrier. Great technique, and poopal! Leaping lily pads. It really is seat of your pants stuff from Michael, but he's over. Back to the teeters. Sarah's down, but she's hanging on. Come on, we're waiting. Croc's getting impatient with Michael, but the wait is over. He's on to the next lily pad. Glenn Roth, Sarah's stuck, but Michael's on the move. Back to Sarah. Can she plant both feet on the barrier? No, she slips just at the wrong moment. Is there a right moment to slip? Ask Stephen. I thought Hannah tamed wild stallions. Oh, Perth! Scab splat scaredy Hannah. He doesn't understand the word scaredy, and what he doesn't understand, he splats. Simple, really. Can Stephen join Michael on the lily pads? Ah, how about the petal clouding out? Nitrous can't stop Michael reaching the platform. Steve is still not over the barrier. Michael's now at the water wall. Sarah's still teetering, but Steve's now over. Surely it's all too late, though, as Michael reaches the top of the wall. Steve is still leaping, but Prince Michael looks like he's going to get his promotion. Sarah has put so much effort in today, but it's all over. The young man who would be king is now the ruler of Splatterlot. He is a prince no longer. Ooh. Why are you trying to shoot at me? Exactly. Defenders, please respect your new king. <laughs> what did I just say? Sorry, it was funny. I'm Someone tell her it's over. Well, Michael certainly lived up to his promise. The other attackers simply couldn't match him. And he gave the defenders plenty to think about, too. They don't like losing to anyone. But even they can't argue about his record. Three challenges and three wins. OK, then, here is something to argue about. Yes, there are always too many to choose from. And we often fall out over which one should win. But this time, we both agreed that the splat of the day should belong to... Our very own King Michael, with the new praise that will be sweeping the nation, the Splatty Twist. We both agreed on the Splat stuff. It is not going to be called... Moving on, here's how Prince Mick became King Michael. The Prince is ready to become King! In the moat challenge, he rolled on the rolling mace, but battled it out with the beastly battle axes and finished the fastest. Yeah! In the stockade, he overcame Scab's foam and Belista's slime. And was sitting pretty throughout the final round, maintaining an early lead that led to victory. So the moral of this tale is, think big, go for your dreams. Maybe one day you too will get what you deserve. Please, sir, can I have what I deserve? Yep. <laughs> I'll leave you with my colour and his flag raising ceremony. The prince has become the king! I didn't deserve that. Trust me, you did.